So this is the new rig found it on Marketplace. It's a 2011 Suburban. The LT. I guess that means it comes with a lot more options than the base one. Has the 5.3. A little spot of rust on the tailgate. That was really the only rust on the body. I thought it was in pretty nice shape for 2011. It's got like a few scuffs and everything, but overall pretty straight, pretty good. Interior is pretty good. It's got the leather, it's got the navigation. It's got the TV, which the kids are excited about. It's got the third row seat. So I think you could fit eight passengers in this, legitimately. It's got the heated seats, the power mirrors, all that. Tires are good, brakes are good. So the idea behind getting the Suburban was, well, you know, my wife has the Jeep and if you followed any of my other videos, you know that we're going through a lot of trouble with that right now with the Jeep dealer. If you want to check out my other videos, bottom line is we brought it to them for a leak. It's got a lifetime powertrain warranty. I brought it for a minor oil leak and uh, they've screwed up something and now I have low oil pressure. But anyway, regardless of that, we were planning on getting a bigger car to replace the Jeep uh, just for the family and trips and whatever. And in case I ever have to tow anything, you know, this car will handle that pretty well. So, of course, you know, old cars, just, I expected some issues when I bought it. So, I knew there was a, a an oil leak. I wasn't sure where it was coming from. And a clunk when you're driving, like, you can feel it when you stop and then you go, you feel like a clunk. It feels like it's coming from the rear, but anyway. Brought it to a local shop that was recommended by a friend. So this is what he came back with. So the clunk is driver's side engine mount. And this is his price estimate, five to 700. Uh, right front, lower ball joint, loose, three to 400. Left front axle seal, which is one of the oil leaks, 250 to 350. Um, engine oil housing to block. That's where the oil filter mounts. Uh, there's, there's a leak there, two to 300, uh, the gasket he's putting down here. And then also, which I knew about, cause there's a warning on the dash, left front tire sensor. 95 so he's got this totaled up 15 to 1800 so that's really way more than i wanted to be spending right now i got a good deal on the car i think so even if i put that amount in there i it would still be a good value uh considering the the condition of the car i mean that seems to be like the main thing you know that's my philosophy anyway so Yes, it's good to get low miles, whatever. Um, some people go for color, this and that. I wanted a dark color for sure, because I think these trucks look better in a dark color than like a, a white or a silver. But luckily it was a dark color and the body's in good shape and the rust situation is, is not really bad. So, you know, to me, some mechanical repairs is reasonable. Now, I think... I'm not used to dealing with shops because I usually do everything myself, but an engine mount seems, it seems like a lot for five to 700. Um, I could end up regretting this move, but uh, so I bought the mount. It was my, my local parts guy, it's $48.
So I'm going to attempt to do that today. Um, and I also got, where is it? I got the, the seal that was mentioned. This is the seal for the, there's like a, a plate above the oil filter housing that I guess would go to an oil cooler if you had it. This doesn't seem to have it. So if that's all that's leaking there, that's a simple fix. The axle seal is looks way more involved. I don't know if I'm going to do that. Maybe I'll bring that to him. Obviously, I can't do the tire pressure sensor because I don't have a tire machine. And the ball joint, maybe I'll wait. Maybe, I mean, I looked up, you know, he wanted three to 400. You can get a whole new remanufactured whatever lower control arm for like $60, $70. And you would just replace the whole thing rather than fighting with trying to get the original ball, ball joint out and putting a new one in. So that that's going to go on the back burner a little bit right now because it drives good other than the, the clunk from the engine mount. So yeah, so I'm going to be attempting that today and uh, we'll see how that goes. So the idea here um, is I think to get it out from the top because when I go underneath with the front axle and drive shaft and everything, you really, I can't see how you would get up there. So here's the mount, three bolts to the frame, and then it's got four bolts into the engine block. So I think we'll take the this uh, steering shaft. It goes from this piece here, from here to here, two bolts, that will come out. That will give us some space to hopefully get get in there and um, the other thing is I'm pretty sure I can easily get the frame bolts from up here the ones to the block are gonna be tricky especially with that heat shield on there but it looks like I might be able to get them through the side here I can get under there so maybe uh, take the tire off and then, uh, you know, I'm going to have to support the engine with the floor jack from, you know, from under there. I think I can get like a block of wood to kind of push on the bottom of the oil pan. So, I don't think it's going to be that hard. Uh, I mean, maybe it will, but it's just figuring out the best way to approach it. So as usual, things turn out to be a little bit more difficult than anticipated. So I was able to loosen some of the bolts through here. I started with the mounting uh, bolts that go from the mount to the engine. So I was able to get two on this side. They're halfway out. Um, so the problem now is you know, getting, I watched a video, another guy got this steering shaft out. And that was the key to getting them out, out. Because there's no room to get it out from the bottom because of the front uh, axle and drive shaft. His came right out. Mine is rusted shut. I tried, as you can see, I'm beating it here and it's just not budging. I don't want to destroy it. So... Plan B now, the only other way I can see to get this thing out, because it's kind of chunky. The front drive shaft is here, but I can see that if I drop it, this sway bar is gonna prevent it from coming down. So now I'm looking at sway bar coming out, drive shaft coming out, and then hopefully through this space up here, I'll be able to get them out, out and in. So, as usual, it'll be an all day job, but that's the way I operate. So I'm gonna take those things out and uh, see how it goes. I'll bring you back for an update. As usual, I'm just wasting a lot of time here with nonsense, so I dropped down the sway bar and also the drive shaft which gave me a fit because it was all rusted to the 
to the to the yoke anyway got that all out of the way and found out there's still not enough room for the mount to fit so back to the shaft which was giving me fits so I realized what I was doing wrong I was trying to slide the shaft up into this piece but that's not how it works it's this piece has to slide up and out of the shaft so I was grabbing it and trying to pull it out with my hand got a tiny bit it was really struggling so then best tool ever invented put the vice grip on there gave it a few taps with the hammer came right out so now I need to figure out how to still I need to get it off this part but we're uh, we're in much better shape we're getting there I think okay I still wasn't able to get the uh, shaft off of the lower part it's really stuck on there but I'm hoping I can just kind of push it out of the way so there's the three bolts one two three for the frame I got those out with the long extension with the uh, universal they weren't all that tight those came right out so now I just have to loosen the two uh, block mount bolts on that side and then it should be free and hopefully we can wiggle it out Now that is in the way. I'm try to check up the engine a little bit more. A little more clearance. Don't break anything. I don't know what that was. Hopefully it was just a jack. Something pretty amazing. This situation. It's like right there. It's right. It's right there. It just won't come out. It's just right there. Come on. down there. This just gets caught in everything. everything, every direction it gets caught. Wow. This is amazing. It really is something. There's something else. I can see why they want 700 to do this. It's a complete, complete and utter ball buster. Now it's down there. I can't get it back. Really 
done it this time. Really, really done it. I've done it. <laughs> wow. All right, we made it. I had to mangle the heat shields and all that, but it came out right through here. And I'm sorry I had to turn the camera off, but the camera was in the way, it was stressing me out, and uh, I didn't have a good place to relocate it. So, it's out. And I hope it's bad after all that. Oh yeah, look. It's completely split right there. Totally separated. All right, so now we fight to get the other one back in. This has been one of the biggest battles. After major battle, got it back in. The hardest thing was the bolts that go up into the block. You can't really see. So I had to get in there and do it by feel, which was not easy. Got the four bolts in. Struggled a lot with, you know, my busted up universal. And uh, I definitely recommend having a good one of these. And it was just very hard to square up a socket in there, doing it blind, doing it by feel, hanging over the car. So it's back in, bolted down. Now I just have to put back everything I moved. Uh, really all I needed to move was this and some of these little wiring uh, harnesses that were clipped into the frame. I just moved them. Taking down the sway bar and the drive shaft was just a big waste of time. So, I've been at this for about four hours and uh, probably going to be at least another hour to get everything back together and clean up. Major mess. I don't know if I'd ever do this again. I'm sure. Uh, it's cheaper ways to get this done, but this was a battle. It was tough, but at least it's done. Almost done. One good thing about taking down the drive shaft, even though I didn't really need to, was it made some room for me to get to this little block off plate, which seemed to be leaking. Uh, so I got the little gasket for it. It had like a metal shim. Which I guess was the gasket, but definitely looked like it was seeping. So I'm gonna skip that and just go with. I guess that's kind of like a metal shim, too. Hmm. Alright, hopefully that works. Got everything all back together. Took a while. Anyway, let me close this up. Sure, it'll be fine, but we gotta do a test drive, of course. Got service traction control. <laughs> oh, isn't that great? So, I guess I broke something. Fun never stops. Nowhere fast garage, I tell you.
feels better. I feel the engine clunking around, so that's good. I must have, uh, I don't know, I was touching wires. I gotta make sure I plugged everything back in. I think I did, unless I broke something. So I couldn't just be done. I guess doing this from 10 in the morning till 5 in the afternoon wasn't enough. Now I'm doing overtime. So I must have done something to the front wheel sensor. As soon as the car rolls, it sets off the uh, ABS traction control thing. So I tried to look. I can't, I can't see. So the massive wheel has to come off again. One never stops here. All I did... As far as the ABS sensor wire, I took it out of here and I just moved it out of the way and then I put it back. So I pulled this connector apart and clicked it back together. I don't know what else I could possibly do here. I mean, everything seems fine. I don't really get it. It would just be like a wild coincidence if this sensor went bad while I was doing this. I didn't break in, scratch any wires. I don't know. I put everything back. Everything's back in place. Why would that do that? I'm sure it's still going to be bad, but I'll give it a try. So here's what happened. I assumed it was the ABS sensor. It was not. I put my code scanner on, and it's coming up with steering wheel position sensor. Apparently, when I undid the steering shaft, I was supposed to lock the steering wheel in place, and I didn't. So if the steering wheel is 360 degrees out of phase, which it could very well be. That will set this code. Every time you turn the steering wheel, it's getting a bad reading. So I don't know what to do now. My code scanner does not have the ability to calibrate it or reset it. So the only thing I could do is either try to take that shaft off, do a 360, I guess in either direction and see what happens, or it has to go to a shop or a dealer that has the tool so unfortunately i made more work or more expense for myself it'll probably end up being more work and more expense so uh i'm calling it a day and um we'll follow up when we get it figured out but the, the engine mount is good drives good now so at least that's done okay now so i took a break had a drink calmed down had some dinner and came out Took the upper shaft off again, rotated it 360 degrees to the right, put it back, started the car immediately. The traction light came on, so I knew that was not right. So took it back out, spun it to the left, 360, and then another 360, put it back, start the car, drive up and down the block it's good to go I thought I was gonna need to bring it to a dealer or a shop or buy a $220 scan tool I must have taken it out rotated it 360 and it was just out of phase put it back to where it was she's happy now so took a while it was not easy but in the end I win the battle car is good to go looks like the oil stopped dripping too i mean that's something i'm gonna have to keep on for a couple of days keep an eye on for a couple of days but usually it just drips right away three spots i haven't seen anything yet so hopefully that little seal that little gasket for the that oil block off plate that was it so 
we're gonna be driving it tomorrow we're gonna be going you know decent trip 40 minute trip so it'll be a good test to see how everything is but anyway thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel helps me out helps the channel grow helps it's just a good thing so if you could it's free thank you good night